This is the third straight year that a team with a Super Bowl winning quarterback drafted another quarterback in the first round. In each of the previous two cases, that incumbent quarterback did not last one full season as the starter and was gone after the year. Now, they were Joe Flacco and Eli Manning. Obviously, Aaron Rodgers is playing at a different level. But still, you draft a guy in the first round to play him. So how do you expect this thing to play out? Yeah, Green, I, I think, you know, I've, I've said this numerous times. I think this plays out, you know, in accordance with just how fast Jordan Love comes along and what his developmental arc looks like. If it's one that is accelerated and he's ahead of schedule, then I think it's one where the conversation surrounding when do the Packers move Aaron and get as much as they can for Aaron becomes more you know, of a current conversation. I think the slower it takes for Jordan Love to develop, along with Aaron's current performance, then the slower this whole transition process will take. I think either way, though, you're looking at two years max left of Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay, and I think the 2022 season, both from a salary cap standpoint and from a logistical standpoint, makes sense for them to go ahead and then transition to Jordan Love. You know, there, there's a reason why you move up to draft a quarterback in the first round. And look, and Aaron has already said, look, he doesn't blame Brian Gutekinds, the general manager, for taking the long-term approach as far as what's best for this football team. He doesn't blame him. I'm sure, obviously, he would have preferred that they would have communicated to him a little bit more about the fact that this could be a possibility in the first round in terms of them moving up for a player. But he gets it. But I, I think just from, you know, when you kind of remove emotion from it, I think two years Without a doubt, I think Green Bay will have someone else underneath center unless Jordan fails miserably and Aaron is playing at such a high level. And then if that's the case, then you may be looking at some new people making the decisions in Green Bay anyway, which will cause a whole nother discussion. But I think two years, 2022 is what you're looking at. That's probably where Aaron Rodgers will be playing somewhere else. All right, so let's consider those two years here, Rob Ninkovich. So you've got... Rodgers is one of the great players of all time, and you've got a team that won 13 games a year ago. And I'm thinking about something Jeff Van Gundy said to me years ago. He said, the most important relationship on any team is between the head coach and the star player. Do you agree with that? And if so, how do you think that situation impacts this team? I agree with that, but I would say this. The relationship between Rodgers and the floor has changed completely now. When you trade up for a first-round quarterback, it's like you're kind of friends with somebody – and then you get along in public and everything's gravy, but then you close the door behind you and you're like, why do I, I don't, God, man, that guy annoys me. So look, I think in front of the team that they have to be cordial. They have to get along before. Yeah. They have to talk four times a week, but I'm telling you, when you trade up to draft somebody's replacement, it's, there's an automatic bad taste in your mouth. You know that they're trying to get rid of you and you don't, it's not fun. And I've been in a situation where they draft somebody in your position they're, they're drafting them to replace you, and then they ask you, like, hey, give them any tip you know. Help them out as much as you can. We know he's not going to be the starter right now, but you know in the back of your head as a player, okay, well, he's going to try and replace me next year or the year after that. So this is going to light a fire under Rodgers. He's going to be motivated. You saw that even after the draft. He had a little chip. He's going to have a bigger chip on his shoulder. Rob. So I think the relationship is going to have to be good for the team. If you're the best player on the team, you do what's best for the team, and you do, you do not, not get along with your, quarter, with your head coach and your quarterback in front of the whole team. That messes up the whole dynamic of the team. Rob, so Rob, how did there's that a ever respect work? thing that's going to have Let to happen. Let me ask you, Rob, how did that ever work with, in your experience with Brady and Belichick? Because I, I think there was a perception that those two guys might not always have been on the same page, and yet they continued winning. What did you see from that? All respect in front of the team. You always have to have that. So when you're in a team setting and you're in front of the group and you're in front of a room, everybody has to respect the head coach. It's all about respect. The second that that's not there, then you start to lose the team. And that's not going to happen with Bill Belichick. If there was any disagreements with anybody behind the scenes, it's going to be between that person and the head coach, and you're going to be able to talk it out, and it's going to be between you and the coach. Once you get in front of the team, that all has to go away because there has to be a respect level for the head coach, and that has to resonate with everybody in the locker room. And so, Lewis, i got 30 seconds. Whose responsibility is that in Green Bay? Is it on the quarterback or on the coach? Your head coach has to well, I, has I to maintain far, order within the locker room. I'm sorry, that's for Lewis, uh, Rob. Go ahead, Lewis. Yeah, I, I think as far as far as Green Bay is concerned, without a doubt, I think look, 
I, I think the mistake really Green Bay possibly could have made here is before the draft even comes up is to make sure that quarterbacks like this, quarterbacks of Aaron Rodgers' level of accomplishment, know that this could possibly happen. You have to look, you, you have to treat guys like this a little bit different considering what kind of importance he holds to, for your organization and what he has accomplished in the NFL. You can't spring this kind of thing on him. So I think they need to make sure that without a doubt, front office and head coach, make sure that this relationship stays positive because they're the ones who are going to be there, at least they're hoping, long after Aaron Rodgers is gone. So you better make sure that you make good with this for as long as he is going to be there because right now it's not off to a great start. Right. And oh, by the way, they were 13-3 and three last year. They should be thinking about trying to win a championship. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.